Tonight, I offer you four themes to help us achieve the goals that, mutually, that we mutually share for the society and for each other. First, let us bring the patient back into the patient-physician relationship. Let us help our patients better understand healthy practices, especially those that are relevant to the medical conditions that we have diagnosed. Let us help them assume a greater role in the day-to-day -day management of their own conditions whenever possible. We heard about that this morning. We can employ information technology and work with allied health professionals to further empower our patients and their families. We can help them become engaged in the pursuit of healthy lifestyles while monitoring their well-being. We can help them become aware of the early signs of acute illness and when to call for help. And finally, when treatment options become limited, we can help them plan a dignified approach to their end-of-life care. The second theme, let us commit to dignified communications with our medical peers, our patients, and key stakeholder, sta stakeholders within the Massachusetts communities that we serve. It is with these individuals that we collectively strive to improve medical care in our state. During my years of training and active practice, I always derive both knowledge and satisfaction from meeting and talking with my medical colleagues about patient care issues. These conversations were an important part of my professional development. This year, I would like to focus on finding ways to improve our peer-to-peer -peer communications. In addition, we have to get the message out to the public that physician activities have an impact on the lives of every citizen of Massachusetts. We contribute very meaningfully to the medical well-being and also economic vitality of our state and our nation. This fact is not always fully appreciated. One way all of you can help improve communication is by making a concerted effort to bring colleagues to MMS or district functions. We want less active members to learn firsthand what we are doing on their behalf. At a minimum, let make, let's make them aware of our digital resources so they can become part of the MMS eCommunities, our online network for members. <clears throat> As part of this initiative, I would also like to ask you to help recruit colleagues into our society. Adding new members will increase our ability to influence the decisions made by the legislators and other key stakeholders who are shaping healthcare policy. My third theme, let us facilitate the development of mentoring relationships between society members of all ages. MMS archives show that during our society's 231 year history, we've had among us world-class innovators and mentors from all specialties. Paraphrasing the words of John Collins Warren in the MGH Ether Dome on October 16, 1846, when he ushered in the use of anesthesia during surgery, gentlemen, MMS is no humbug. I think it's important that we recognize the distinguished mentors we have among us today. What I have learned from my 38 years as a physician and educator is that mentoring relationship, relationships are actually partnerships in which both sides reap immeasurable benefits. These interactions often extend over decades and frequently sharpen our skills as physicians. Let me give you an example. When I was a medical student in the summer of 1971, I had the privilege of working on a team led by Dr. Leonard Morse, a distinguished mass medical physician that many of you know. Our assignment was to determine the source of the outbreak of hepatitis that mysteriously afflicted the entire Holy Cross football team a few years earlier. One of my assignments was to inspect the reservoirs and the wildlife in the Worcester area to determine if either might have served as the source of the outbreak. Eventually we determined that the source of the water contamination wasn't related to the reservoir or the wildlife, but to Worcester's antiquated plumbing system. What I learned under the mentorship of Dr. Morse was the importance of keeping your mind and eyes open at all times. You must pay attention not only to the patient in front of you, but to everything in your environment. Thirty years later, I, was, I found myself thinking about Dr. Morse's lessons when I was sent to New York in October of 2001. I was, I was there to help prevent the spread of anthrax to the employees of the letter sorting center of the city's main post office. After assessing the environment in the post office building, I realized it was likely that anthrax spores were still present. 
I propose that both postal workers and responding medical personnel should be receiving prophylactic antibiotics while working in the building. Because of the concern, both groups were treated and no one contracted anthrax. I have observed that long-term mentoring relationships help bridge the gap between generations of physicians and foster the continued refinement of medical practice. In other words, the art of medicine gets transmitted through these relationships. I plan to work with MMS staff to create interactive opportunities during our leadership training programs for those who wish to begin new mentoring relationships or foster existing ones. My fourth theme, let us actively engage in self-evaluation. I would ask all of you to step back for a moment in the next week and ask yourselves how you might improve your physical and uh, mental well-being as well as your physician, as your professional fitness. <clears throat> we can inspire the patients we interact with by our own physical and mental competence. I believe that improving physician fitness will lead to better patient care and satisfaction, as well as greater, a, a greater sense of physician professional fulfillment and perhaps longevity. <clears throat> if you can identify ways that our society can better promote physician wellness, I want you to contact me with your ideas. We must also be more vigilant about helping members of our profession who are exhibiting signs of stress or impairment, especially during these difficult economic times. MMS has resources available to help those individuals who may require some assistance. Finally, let me summarize for you the path I would like to see us take this year to assure our continued success. Let us focus on revisiting and reinvigorating the time-honored values of our noble profession. We can achieve this goal by treating our patients with dignity and respect and by learning from each other's successes and failures. Let us agree to make a concerted effort to improve our interactions with each other, with our patients and our families, as well as our medical society and the communities in which we live. We should we regard effective communication as a form of preventative medicine for healthcare professionals. As a unified group of professionals demonstrating our commitment to the well being of the public through our words and our actions, we will remain leaders rather than become followers. Let us work together to shape the future of healthcare as we would want it for our patients and our families. Thank you for your continued service to our society, our profession, and our commonwealth. God bless you all.